Now, I want to do this. The first thing I want to do is just highlight this story to give us some contemporary context. This is from Fox News. Washington, D.C. removes Cuba Libre street painting from in front, in front of the Cuban embassy. Embassy located in the same street where Mayor Bowser ordered painting last year of Black Lives Matter. I got to say, I was actually shocked to see this, even though I know the biases of the establishment. I know that they support Black Lives Matter. I know the Black Lives Matter activists say they're Marxists. I was still surprised to see that they would be as brazen as to remove Cuba Libre from the street. They painted Black Lives Matter. They had no approval. They took the tax money. They painted it. This just shows you the, the degree to which the establishment in the U.S. is in favor of the communist dictatorship of Cuba. And it is very scary to me. We also have this story. Nicole Hannah-Jones said Cuba most equal Western country in a podcast. The funny thing is, it's also AOC. It's also other progressive Democrats saying that, oh, the real problem is the embargo. It's not communism. So I want to I want to I want to I need to understand. Right. I, I can see what's happening here in the U.S. I can see the changes that are happening, but I'm interested. Uh, you know, so you, you, you're both activists, uh, Jose. You were actually born into a free and democratic Cuba. How old were you when the communists took over? I was 18 years old. Not when the communists, when the revolution took over. It was never intended to have a socialist uh, revolution taking power and remaining in power for 60, more than 62 years. So I was 18 years old. I, I had just graduated from the Maris Brothers with a bachelor, of, uh, with a degree on Bachelor of Arts. And I was planning to attend Havana University to study journalism, journalism and law. And uh, so, you know, but basically what took over was a big lie. So, so how a did... A big lie of Fidel. When you, you were 18 when the revolution happened, but that wasn't a communist No, revolution. no, when the revolution, when, when Batista fall down, escaped Cuba, and Fidel took all the merits of the revolution that had been also launched by other organizations and by other leaders and by other movements. But in 1959, Fidel was able to control all the power of himself. And being a, a great speaker and a huge liar, he uh, gained total support in Cuba. That is the truth, in 1959. But right after that, his big lie began to dismantle. And the truth came out. And then those same people that were with him fighting Batista, that were with him in Sierra Maestra, like Mayor Hubert Matos, 10 months after he took power, told Fidel, compañero Fidel, I cannot continue in the way the revolution is going. I don't want to be an obstacle to you. I want to become a teacher again. Well, before I went to the Sierra Maestra, I want to be a teacher again, and good luck with the revolution. That's when the big lie really became an oppressive, totalitarian idea of eliminating anybody who dissent with you. And that's when Fidel Castro sent to Camagüey, where Hubert Matos was in charge of the military, Camilo Cienfuegos, the chief of the army, and with orders of apprehending him and taking him to Havana. Accusing him on national radio, Fidel, when he sent Camilo over there, that Hubert Matos was a traitor. And when Camilo Cienfuegos got to Camagüey and saw Hubert Matos peaceful in his home with his family and his kids, he had not rebelled against the revolution decided to tell Uber, stay here, I got to go back and talk to Fidel. And then more lies began to continue. Wow. Then f uh, uh, they shut down Camilo because Camilo did not follow Castro's order, orders of appre apprehending Uber Matos. And then they killed Camilo Cienfuegos and people started, uh, started to blame Uber Matos on the Fidel direction. Now the responsible for killing Uber Matos was over too. How did it get to that point? How did the revolution happen? The revolution happened was very simple <coughs> and was a tremendous excuse for Castro. 
Fulgencio Batista, March 10, 1952, who had been, by the way, I would say a good president in 1940, from 1944. He was actually a, an elected president in Cuba yeah. before he threw his coup d'etat and came into power. So that's yeah. like a little fact that maybe a lot of people don't don't know. So with an excuse, you know, of uh, of uh, uh, saving the country from fraud in the upcoming elections, Batista, a few months before Prio and was going to end his presidency and new elections were coming in he he decided to to start a a, a, a revolution based on that on on, on, on the coup d'etat on the coup d'etat and from uh, that that was the excuse and this is why it, it, it's sad to to say that maybe Batista was not as bad as people blame him to be during those seven years but the truth of the matter is that without Batista and the good excuse to Fidel to use the coup d'etat as an excuse for his revolution, nothing would have happened in Cuba because Fidel did not have, Fidel had tried to be in the political atmosphere, in, uh, to be part of a political party, to be elected in elections for uh, small uh, positions, and he never won anything. But when Batista gave the coup d'etat and in, 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 in the 26th of July of 1953, that was in 1952, the coup d'etat. In 26 uh, July uh, of 1953, he attacks the Moncada barracks. He brings there a lot of young Cubans who were very ide ideal idealist, and many of them died there, wow. but he gained a name. Mm. And from that day, was born the 26th of July revolutionary movement. So the 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 Batista, yeah. he, he he was claiming there was fraud in the election. Batista claimed that he interrupted the elections that were upcoming because they were going to be fraudulent, and with that excuse, he gave the coup d'état. Of course, nobody believed him. The thing, the interesting thing, if people want to think about this is that Batista was in power. He was a dictator. But he didn't mess with the media. He didn't mess with the business. He didn't mess with enterprises. He just wanted to make some money and be again a figure in Cuba. But, you know, that, that, that basically did not affect it at all the development of Cuba from 1953 or 1952 to 1959. Cuba continued to grow. Cuba continued to develop businesses. Cuba continued to raise the standard of living of the Cuban people. The problem with the socialism and with the revolution, the, total, the totalitarian revolution, is not only that they seek power, it's that they destroy everything. And it's very clear, and I am not here to defend Batista. I'm telling you, Batista was, sadly enough, the good excuse that Fidel had to do all these things that he did. There's, there's a lot of similarities there to what we're seeing in Donald, the U.S. now. Donald Trump. Well, you know, I mean, he's not, a, he's not the fascist dictator that Batista may have been, but Donald Trump has that hatred. The excuse. It, the excuse mm. they the use. The society feels it, yeah. To claim that they need power, they need new laws, they need to shut down their, their political opposition, quell dissent, go after the extremists, arrest them, expand uh, federal resources and power and law. I mean, you look at what they've been saying about the far right, about militia groups and the, and the threat of white supremacy. And uh, of course, it's not identical. There's just a few things that, I, that, I, that, that's, that feel similar. You have this guy, Trump, they call him a dictator, they call him a fascist, but he didn't aside from insulting the media, yeah. he didn't shut down the press. He may have banned them from some of his, his events. He didn't call in the military to go and crush protests or anything like that. Certainly has his issues. But because of, of what the media said about him, because of the view people had about him, the Democrats now you know, getting elected are using that as an excuse for basically everything, among other things, to be completely honest. So my, my fear is, obviously, we have, a, we have a lot of different things that are happening in the U.S. outside of just the, the 
you know, politics. We have COVID, we have the pandemic, you know, lockdowns and things like that are coming. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to timcast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.